Hello. Before we start, I want to say a few words about the general conditions we need to wrap a vehicle in a professional way. First, we need to prepare our workshop for the wrap. The workshop should have an ambient temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius, 68 Fahrenheit, that would be perfect. Obviously, the workshop needs to be clean. The floor should be wiped regularly and the walls dusted on a regular basis to prevent the adhesive from picking up dust. Also, avoid drafts, as this could complicate things. When the workshop is ready, we have a look at the vehicle. The vehicle should be pre-cleaned in the normal way. This is to say a wash with soapy water is generally sufficient. Dry the vehicle thoroughly with compressed air or a soft cloth. Then you bring the vehicle into the workshop to do the final clean. You have to be careful with the details and look, for example, at the tyres, which accumulate dirt and the same for the wheels. It would be good to cover them with paper before you start with the wrap, in addition to the basic clean. Then, the rocker panels are often heavily soiled and coated with sealant for protection. That obviously has to be cleaned. OK, now we have finished preparing the vehicle, cleaning the workshop and the vehicle, we can start wrapping. This is to say, the application of the film. First we must determine which product we're going to use, that is to say, which type of film we need. There are fundamental differences between films. On the one hand, there are calendared films, and on the other, there are cast films. Calendared films are generally used on applications where the surface is not shaped. That is to say, 2D applications where the film is applied flat or simply folded. In this case, a calendared film is acceptable. As soon as we have to shape the film, as on a wing or a wing mirror, for example, we need a cast film. And we have to watch the temperature again. We have an ambient temperature of about 20 Celsius, 68 Fahrenheit. To shape the film, we need a temperature of about 40 Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit, and an even higher temperature of 90 degrees Celsius, 194 Fahrenheit, to destroy the memory effect, since the great advantage of a cast film is that we can stop this memory effect, the shrinking back. OK, now after all these preparations, we're going to have a look at the tools that we need for our wrap. First, there are cleaning products, actually a complete cleaning system. First the remover, then the pre-cleaner, and the final cleaner. We use soft cloths of different colours so as to avoid mixing different liquids on the same cloth. Indeed, the colours match those of the cleaning liquids. For the actual application, we use a squeegee like this one. There are different models, a softer one or a stiffer one. This one here, for example, is magnetic, which is very convenient. On the edge of this squeegee, you can see a piece of felt. You can get this as sheets, which you can cut to size and stick on the squeegee. This avoids scratching the film and makes the squeegee glide smoothly on the surface. For the same reason, we use an application glove such as this one. Normally, you only need one for one hand. That way, your hand actually becomes another tool and glides over the surface more easily. Then, we also need some absorbent paper. This is very useful to pick up any water that may remain after cleaning. These magnets are also very useful. There are small ones and bigger ones to position the film at the beginning before the install. Then there are different tapes. They're very useful to maintain the film on the vehicle body, in particular if it's not magnetic. There are two more tapes which make cutting easier. First, there is the Tiro Deco. You put it on a vehicle along the cut. It is safer and it avoids scratching the vehicle paint. And there is the Fill Deck, which incorporates a Kevlar thread. 
You put it on before you apply the film. By pulling on the thread, you cut the film, thus avoiding the use of a blade. We will also require cutting tools. But we don't work with scalpels because you need to change the blade regularly to have a sharp edge for a clean cut. It simply works better with a box cutter style knife like this one. You can also retract the blade. The blades exist in different angles, it's easy to see. There are the ones with an angle of 45 degrees or another with 30 degrees. You use one for straight cuts and the other for more detailed work. For the details we use the sharp angle and for the straight cuts the normal blade. This little tool is also a cutter and it is meant for cutting the film from the roll or large cuts on big sheets of film on the vehicle without the risk of scratching the substrate. We obviously also need a heat gun. The heat gun should be of the industrial type and must be able to handle high temperatures. A little hairdryer would be absolutely useless. We need a professional model. And to control the temperature, I mentioned that before, we need this device. With an infrared ray, this thermometer measures the temperature on the surface of the film or even on the floor of our workshop. This is really an essential tool. So, these are the tools that we need. There are obviously lots of other little accessories, for example, to work in the corners. A wax pen can be useful to mark the position of the film. There are obviously many others, but these here are the basic tools we need to make our job easier. And now comes the practical side. OK, we're going to look at a real application. We use this sheet of film. Here it's our HX 30,000 pink mat, so a cast film, with a structured adhesive indicated by the HX. HX means hex press. I simply drop the film on the surface and add a couple of bubbles, as you can see. Now you can see the reason behind the structure in the adhesive. It is indeed very easy to remove these bubbles with a light pressure with the finger on the film. If there are any larger bubbles, I press down with a finger. I wait for a moment and the bubbles disappear. So on large surfaces, things are a lot easier. If you want to do the same thing on a curved surface of a lightly larger size, you first remove the liner. You can immediately see that there are limits to what is doable. You can also see that at once there are wrinkles because of the convex shape. So what can we do in this case? We can use the thermal gun and use heat. This will soften the vinyl. The temperature to do this was about 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. This way the film is softer and we can stretch it over this convex shape. We start here with an anchor, then we lift the film and hold it like that. I take the thermal gun and heat the film. You have to wipe with regular movements. We put the heat gun down and now you can see how the film adapts to this convex 3D shape. With the help of a squeegee, I can now apply the film and because of the hex press structure, we don't get any bubbles. If ever you come across a little bubble, you can easily eliminate it with your finger. Here, there are a few wrinkles. The structure in the adhesive allows us to reposition the film. I heat the film again to 40 Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit. And with a little tension, I pull the film over this component. Then, I use my squeegee to finally apply the film little by little. 
By proceeding this little by little way, you wrap the entire component. OK, now we're going to do a complete wrap of this wing. I've already prepared a sheet of film with the right size and I'm going to position it over the wing with the help of the magnet which will maintain the film. Then we check that the film covers the entire surface of the wing and I'm going to do a first cut. To do this I need a knife. I try to locate the rims of the wing and the headlight. And I cut the film. It is important to keep an overlap beyond the component. So don't cut too close. Make sure you keep an overlap of 5 to 10 centimeters beyond the component you want to wrap. This is important so you can easily grip the film. We repeat the same thing on this side. And we cut again with a nice overlap. Now the film is pre-cut and for the time being I put it to one side. Before applying the film we have to do a final clean of the substrate and we do that with our final cleaner and a microfiber cloth. Then we vaporize the cleaner onto the cloth and not on the substrate and we clean the surface and degrease it at the same time. What is important is to clean in particular the rims with the squeegee wrapped in a cloth, moistened with the liquid. Then we take the tape and cover the rims of each component that we do not want to wrap, like for example this headlight, to prevent the film from sticking on the rims of these components which would later complicate the cuts. Now we take our film again and position it. Don't forget to check that there is enough overlap around the component you want to wrap. When that is done, we can begin with the application itself. For most components of the vehicle body, the easiest is to remove the liner entirely right from the start and to position everything over the component. If it is a curved component, it's not so easy as there is no straight surface to put the film down on. It's easy if you position several magnets and by removing the liner only partially. Fold the film back and cut one half of the liner. And we start applying the film. And then we take away the magnets and do the same thing on the other side. Lift the film, remove the liner and let the film drop onto the surface. At the moment this does not look very nice. Now you understand the need for a film with a structured adhesive like for example our hex press media. From the start you should work and heat to 40 degrees Celsius 104 Fahrenheit so the film softens and you can stretch the vinyl. Lift the film up to heat it. I hold the film like this and start heating. When it's 40 degrees Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit, it's easy to see. As soon as I switch on the heat gun, the vinyl softens up and tensions. At this moment, we have reached 40 degrees Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit.
Again, we use the squeegee and with a few moves, I set the first anchors. The more the component is curved, the harder the beginning is. We keep on progressing while heating and stretching. Whenever we are happy with the position of the film, that there are no more wrinkles, we squeegee the surface of the film. But first, I have to look after this area. Here the film is folded back adhesive against adhesive. In principle, with our films, there's no problem. I simply separate them. If there are any wrinkles, it's easy to remove them with the heat gun. Before we go any further, we have to work on this curved area. To do this, we have to lift the film slightly with your hand underneath and pulling upwards while heating again at 40 degrees Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit. As soon as the film comes off, I take the heat gun and I heat while keeping on moving. If necessary, lift the film a little more. And we put the film down. This surface is very good, it's very smooth. Then we carry on with the squeegee. Here there are some wrinkles left. Same thing. I heat with the thermal gun. You have to be careful not to stretch the film too much, just the amount you need. Sometimes there are little wrinkles in the vinyl. This is not a problem. Simply lift the film and smooth it with a little heat. And we put the film down. When working with the squeegee becomes too complicated to go further, it may be advantageous to work with your hand. To do this, I put on cotton gloves. This way my hand glides better on the surface.
Once the whole surface has been applied, we will look after the rims, still using heat. Here you have to be careful not to stretch the film too much. That is to say, where it's possible, we lift the film a little and reheat slightly. Then, we start with the cuts. What is important is, after the cuts or even before, to destroy the memory effect of the film. If you don't do that, the film will take back its initial shape. And now we heat along all the rims. I'm going to heat each component with regular movements. And always heating, measuring. Here we get to 40 degrees. So we have to increase the temperature to get to 90 degrees Celsius, 194 Fahrenheit. Do not ever stop the thermal gun over a single spot. Keep on moving and take the temperature at regular intervals, 65 degrees, so we continue. And now we reach almost 90 degrees Celsius, 194 Fahrenheit. It's really very important not to measure the temperature near the heat gun, as the result would not be correct. If I measure the airflow, I get 130 Celsius, 266 Fahrenheit. As soon as I put the heat gun away, the temperature drops to 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit. So if I'm too close, the temperature reading would be completely wrong. So we do it this way, heat, then measure. And in this way, I work along all the rims. And finally, this component is finished. Twenty-four hours after we have finished the wrap, it is extremely important to check once again all critical areas on the vehicle. Areas with recesses, the underside of the bumpers, concave and convex areas, the wing mirrors, door pillars. All these areas must be checked again. If there's a spot where the film might have peeled off, reapply with the heat gun and the squeegee. And the vehicle is finished and ready for delivery.